Hi guys, Thomas here from New York Guitar Academy. And in this lesson, we're going to dive into the nitty gritty detail of what is making this last lesson sound the way it does. It's Mixolydian mode. Uh, that kind of lilty, lyrical sound mixed with the legato is how we're kind of achieving that. So we're going to go into how I know to play those notes and where those notes are and kind of how to come up with these sort of runs. So when you're ready, grab your guitar and let's get going. Before we get started guys, just a reminder that the full course is available on the website. That's the interactive tabs, the backing tracks, chord diagrams and full write-ups explaining all of this good stuff. So if you really want to see what this course has really got to offer and how it's meant to be viewed, head on over to the website. So we're going to be talking about the Mixolydian mode today, but this kind of extends to generally any scale or mode that you can think of. Really, you got to think of these scales as like a container of certain emotive responses or certain kind of colors. And the Mixolydian color is just goes hand in hand with that kind of Celtic music. It's as soon as I hear some run like that, I just instantly kind of think about Gaelic or Celtic kind of music like that. It just is part of that sound. And there'll be other musical genres or styles that have a certain kind of mode or a certain expectation of harmony or melody that pushes it into that genre. So today we're talking about mixed lidding, but just know that this applies to lots of different things if you just kind of find the right scale to talk about. So mixolydian, this is the fifth mode of the major scale. And when you're hearing modes, you just need to think it's like a subversion of your expected major or minor scale. So <clears throat> any time you're talking about a minor um, mode, you're thinking natural minor scale, and it's got one note different, right? And that one note changes the whole color of the scale and the way you hear it. And that goes the same for any major mode. So the Mixolydian is a major mode, which means we're doing A Mixolydian here. So I'm thinking A major scale, it's my kind of core where I start to think about. And then I think, what's the change I need to do to make, make it Mixolydian from major? And that changes the seventh note of the scale getting flattened. So the seventh note of A major is G sharp. So to make it A Mixolydian, I just take all those same notes, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp. But that G sharp, I'm just going to move that down one semitone to a G, right? We talked a little bit about the modes previously in level two. Um, so the fifth mode of the D major scale is A mixolydian. So it's going to have all the same notes as the D major scale, but you just start those notes from the A. And when you kind of phrase it in a way that doesn't sound like it's just part of D major, you get the mixolydian sound. I uh, suppose the question then is, how do you phrase it that way? The idea is you have to make A your tonic. So we have to be focusing on the notes that make the A chord. A, C sharp, E. And then we throw in this G note, not as part of a chord, but as part of a melody. Melody. But we're always kind of going back to that A. So we're really shoehorning A as our tonic, as our sound. And then this mode is kind of fitting on top to take us in that mix in direction. So once we've got that, you know, stylistically, I know Celtic has this kind of lilty runs with legatos and it's all rhythmically just eighth notes the whole way, maybe a couple of triplets. I didn't want to put those in just yet. Um, so I need to think of what rhythmically am I doing to make it the style that I want. Again, this goes for any style. I know for Celtic, it's mostly these eighth note runs. Harmonically, it's going to be Mixolydian or sorry, uh, melodically and harmonically, it's going to be Mixolydian. And then tonally, we're going to talk about this legato. That's how we get this lilty feeling. It's too heavy. It's a little too heavy if we pl pluck all these notes. So we need this legato to run them into each other smoothly. Now, how do I know where these notes are? Well, 
fat board knowledge is one. Like I said, you can think about a D major scale. You hear there, resolves to this D note. So I need to work to shoehorn this A resolution point in. Okay, I just, I just don't go to the D. If you don't go to the D chord, then we kind of keep that suspense there, like it's, we're in A. Now, I've taken this three string scale approach. That allows me to do all these open string hammer-ons and polos. So I'm kind of thinking of a scale like. Where I've kind of nearly always got three notes per scale or three notes per string. Unless we do these kind of flashy runs that aren't as hard as they seem. Uh, and then I just need to think again, how do I frame the scale in a way that relates harmonically to what I'm doing? If we look at some of the runs, all the places where the runs kind of sit will exist within the A major chord. Apart from the very end when we're kind of lifting back into the D, but if we look at the second time, Going back to this note, this, this is A and E, part of an A chord. So again, to make sure I'm not sounding like I'm in just D major, but A mixolydian, I've got to keep coming back to these A notes. And then, stylistically, I'm just kind of running up the scale, you know, it's kind of, if, you can, if you're able to thread them together in that for this Celtic style. It all just kind of sits like that. So I, I kind of chose this style as it's easy to replicate once you kind of get the little components to it. Rhythmically, it's not too hard. It's just about putting these little runs once you've got that technique down. So what you should do once all this is kind of sitting a little bit more comfortable with you is try to experiment in this area. You know, like I said, it's kind of the exact order of the notes is fairly inconsequential, very inconsequential. The ending point and the starting point typically are gonna like create a bracket around the phrase. So we hear it start and end as this A, that kind of ties it down to that A, A, A harmony. But all the other stuff in between doesn't really matter. So experiment with some of these runs. There's this theme of experimentation coming into this level three stuff because we're really getting quite advanced here. And the best way to learn all this stuff is once you kind of got a core understanding is to experiment with it and try creating your own stuff. So again, I'm just thinking about this D major scale. But through the eyes of an A. trying not to really frame the D major chord notes, D or F sharp, too much. Experiment with this. See, can you create any mixolydian lines yourself? You know, you've seen it's all hammer-ons and pull-offs. As many as you can put in there. You can try even some like three, three runs instead of two. If you're ever getting, if you're ever kind of straying into unknown territory, just make sure you come back to the notes that you want for that harmony or that chord. In this case, notes in A, E, A, C sharp, any of those three notes. And then there's a little bit of phrasing, which kind of just your ear. There's a little bit of like a question and answer idea. So I take like a four note phrase then do a four note phrase and four note phrase, or it might go four, five, four, five, something like that. We don't want to have just random stuff all the time. I know it can seem like this is totally random, but the phrasing, I've kind of grouped these eighth notes. Like here's my first group of eighth notes, and then I'm gonna try and mirror that sort of movement or the, those ideas in the second group of eighth notes. And it'll start to kind of form musical sentences that hopefully make some sort of sense. So there's a bit about the mixolydian.
hopefully you can really hear the kind of tonal shift between this first section that we've done and then that second section, where even though it's technically using all the same notes, because I've shifted my kind of emphasis and focus onto the notes of the A chord, it really sounds more like it's flowing in that direction rather than the D major. That's the trick about modes. I know they can trick people a lot, is you have to really stick with the, the chord that is creating your modal center. So say you want a Lydian, for instance, in this key, it's the fourth mode of a scale, so it'd be G. So I really got to focus on that D major scale, but through the eyes or the lens of a G chord. So focusing on that G, B, E notes. Same idea there. Um, okay, so food for thought. Get experiment and see what kind of runs you can make. Don't be afraid to move a little further up the neck if you're confident with your notes and your scale. Again, that's all just the same notes, just moving further up. You can try connecting them with hammer-ons, pull-offs, slides. And get as wild as you can with it, start building up their strength in the legato. Okay, when you're ready, come join me in the next lesson. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching that video, guys. If you want to see the next one, then just click here. And if you want to see the playlist, then click here. Please do leave us a comment, like, subscribe. You know all the, all the spiel by now. Let us know how you're getting on. We'd love to hear from you.